Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about Stephen King's 2007 release, Blaze. We'll show you the points to look for when trying to identify first US and first UK editions of the book, as well as share some historical context and thoughts on the work itself. The first US edition was published by Scribner. There's the spine, the front cover, and the back jacket. Inside the front cover, look for a price of US $25. It's a bit of a pricey book considering, considering how brief it is overall. On the copyright page, look for a handy dandy number line that includes the number one. That's what you're looking for. I have seen um, numerous copies of Blaze that have the copyright um, page number line. That includes one, but do not have a priced jacket. So to have a true first edition with the book and the jacket together is what kind of wraps that up and makes it count as a first edition. You want to make sure you look for a priced jacket as well as the copyright page information. Underneath the dust jacket, pretty basic gray boards with kind of a pale blue binding and sort of coppery printing on the spine. Another thing that's worth pointing out is that it's kind of hard to tell when I'm just holding it here like this, but Blaze has a slightly smaller trim size than your average modern Stephen King hardcover. So it's a little bit shorter, a little bit narrower, it's pretty slim volume overall. So that is another another point to look for on the shelf. Um, it won't be as tall as most of the other books around it. But yeah, other than that, there's not a whole heck of a lot to say about this one. Um, those are the points to look for, and I'm going to pass it over to Noah to show the first UK edition of Blaze. Hey, everybody. So today we're going to be taking a look at the uh, first British trade hardcover edition of Blaze. Uh, this is the book. It's um, a typical uh, Hotter and Stoughton trade edition. It has a printed price of $16.99 on the front flat, uh, jacket flap. And it's, it's kind of nicely bound, though. It's got a, a really shiny silver cloth binding with black foil stamping on the spine. I don't know how well you guys can see that in this light, but... Uh, it's very, very nice for a trade. The copyright page on this one uh, just states first edition. Where is it? There we go. <laughs> With no indication of printing uh, for the first printing. And um, that's, that's pretty much the book. That's what it looks like. First UK trade hardcover edition of Blaze. So the first thing you notice when you look at the cover of Blaze, is that it has two names, Stephen King and the infamous Richard Bachman. So this book was published in 2007, and Richard Bachman died of cancer of the pseudonym in 1985. But the reason Richard Bachman's name is on the cover is that Blaze was originally written in the same period as the other original core Bachman books. That is, it was originally written before the publication of Carrie, before Stephen King became a thing. And of course, in the first edition of Thinner, um, the there's an there's a picture of an author photograph of Bachman who is somebody completely other than Stephen King, and that still cracks me up to this day. But since The Secret was out, um, Blaze includes a more period specific photo of Stephen King from around the area from around the era when Blaze was actually written in the same era when Rage, The Long Walk, Roadwork, and The Running Man were also written. Also get a kick out of the also by page in Blaze. Doesn't mention anything about Stephen King's bibliography. It says, also by Richard Bachman, The Long Walk, Roadwork, The Running Man, Thinner, and The Regulators. 
one very, very glaring omission is Rage, which Stephen King had allowed or forced to go out of print by this point. It's not even mentioned on this also by Page. So the background of Blaze is that it's the last novel that Stephen King wrote prior to writing Carrie. And then Carrie, of course, sold. It, it made him a huge, um, a huge amount of money for the day, and he was able to focus on writing full time. And the question became, what was he going to follow Carrie up with? And he had Blaze, the original version of Blaze. And he had this little vampire novel called, I don't know, Salem's Lot? And you may have heard of it. Uh, he submitted both Blaze and Salem's Lot to his publisher. And the publisher, despite the fact that he was worried um, that that Stephen King's editor was worried that he would be typecast as a horror author if they went with the vampire novel, to which Stephen King famously replied something along the lines of, I don't care what they think of me as long as the check's cash. Um, the rest is history. Steve, he followed it, carry up with Salem's Lot, which was followed by The Shining, Night Shift, The Stand, and on and on. And Blaze was promptly filed away and for a long time um, forgotten. Now, he does reference Blaze in the author's notes in different seasons, so it wasn't completely unknown, but it was put away in the trunk. It became a trunk novel. Um, and for the longest time, and, and as time went on, Stephen King seemed to develop a a lower and lower opinion of the novel, um, considering it to be almost embarrassingly maudlin and sentimental when he went back and read it read it again or remembered it. Um, he was he was almost embarrassed by the work, and there's um, a huge debt that Blaze owes to Of Mice and Men which kind of comes across. There's a lot of literary homage in Stephen King's work, but the debt that Blaze owes to Steinbeck is pretty huge. And I would say that it's it's bigger than the average Stephen King homage. And that may have played a part in his feelings about the book. But as often happens, given enough time, his opinions started to shift, started to mellow, and the original manuscript was found and was presented back to him, or he asked for it and it was found and presented back to him. Or maybe it wasn't a matter of finding it at all, but he said, hey, I wanna look at Blaze again. And someone at the library at the University of Maine where all of his papers were kept just grabbed it and gave it back to him. Regardless, he read it over and decided there was some merit there after all. So he rewrote the thing, um, particularly the first 100 pages or so, to remove what he considered just the over, over the top kind of um, mushy sentimentality of the piece, which is funny to me in retrospect because Blaze is still damn maudlin and sentimental. It, it is emotionally manipulative. And I say that not, it sounds terrible, but I don't mean it as a bad thing. I just mean that it's, it is sad, it's a tearjerker, it's tragic, and it's not particularly subtle about achieving these effects. I fully recognize that I was being taken for a ride emotionally when I read Blaze. I remember reading it when it first came out and it made me cry, it made me feel sad. Um, and it just, it just kind of broke my heart, but it does so with the subtlety of a meat cleaver. I mean, this is not, I mean, it's just right out there, right out there up front. This thing is going to be sad and it's not going to end well for, for anyone involved. But I still, I, I recall when it first came out being fascinated and excited by the story of how it came to be. And any um, classic vintage Stephen King work, getting new life breathed into it and a new chance um, to find an audience, I, I always find to be very exciting indeed. And Stephen King probably recognizing that this was not going to be one of his, you know, A-list, um, huge 
lasting impact novels um, declared that he would donate all of his proceeds from the purchase of Blaze, from the, from the sale of Blaze, to his Haven Foundation, which exists to support um, artists who, through accident or illness, are no longer able to make money through the, through the pursuit of their art. So there's a good cause, a good cause to Blaze. It's an interesting story of how it came to be. Um, and it's, you know, perhaps a bit of a publicity stunt when it was released under the Bachman name, but not quite as much of a publicity stunt as Desperation and The Regulators being released on the same day. The Regulators, of course, being a, a new um, post-Bachman death, Bachman work. And this one, it actually makes a lot of sense because originally it came from that very, very hungry, touch and go, almost desperate era for Stephen King prior to him hitting it big. Um, the, the work itself, I remember, like I said, I enjoyed it. It's very sentimental. I can't even imagine um, what the original draft, the original version was to, must have been if this is the one that Stephen King has gone back through and kind of pared back and cut a lot of that out. And it's still so much. Um, I can't imagine what the first iteration was like. But it does not, it's not classic Stephen King. I doubt you'll find anybody who would say, like, what's your favorite Stephen King book? Oh, Blaze, definitely by a mile. In fact, a lot of people may not have even heard of Blaze. It was not the only book that Stephen King released in 2007. And like I've mentioned in other videos, his schedule of publication is such that the newest book gets released, people consume it, and before they even, before the legend really has a chance to settle in, there's been another book and another book and another book. And sometimes ones like Blaze just kind of get lost in the shuffle. But that's not to say that it's not good or not worth seeking out. It definitely is, particularly if you're a Stephen King completist, I would highly recommend seeking out Blaze because it is um, for the literary merit, but also just for the interesting historical context of the work and what it almost meant to Stephen King's career. I, I enjoy participating or purveying the maddening art of, of the what if, and I know it's totally pointless to think, what if this or what if that, but I can't help with this one to think, what if Stephen King's bibliography had been Carrie and then Blaze? What would have come after if he had achieved success? Would he have achieved success if, if Blaze had been his official second novel? But it hardly matters because decades after the fact, decades after it was written, it did finally get its place and its chance to shine and see the light of day. So anyway, really worth checking out. Anyway, thank you as always for your support, for viewing, for your comments, for your questions. I really, really appreciate it. I'm, I love being a part of this passionate community. I know lots of authors have ardent fans and even communities of fans, but as far as what I've seen and personally experienced, there is no more broad, widespread, and passionate a group of fans of an author as the fans of Stephen King. And I am honored to be just a small part of this community. I appreciate you. I thank you for your time, and I will talk to you later. Bye.